Today I'm going to show you how Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system works. So here we've got a six-speed automatic transmission out of a 2012 Audi Q5 and you can see here it is mounted longitudinally for a rear-wheel drive bias. This here is where the rear drive shaft would mount up to. And then we've got the front prop shaft which is going to mount up to the front differential over here which is kind of integrated into the transmission bell housing which is then going to bolt to the front axle. Now as a result the front axle plane here is actually behind the front engine which means that you'll have a very nose-heavy vehicle in front of the axle. Start with the torque converter, see if we can pop that off. So I need to remove the front drive shaft here. This attaches to the front differential and this one will go to the left side axle. Now I should be able to pop off the torque converter. So here's a good look at the setup here. We've got the front differential off to the right side with the axle that goes through in front of that torque converter. And with a Subaru, for example, that differential sits just underneath the input shaft over here for a symmetrical all-wheel drive setup. And that would allow for equal axle lengths on both sides. I'm gonna remove this oil drain here. I'm gonna drain the transfer case oil. So as a quick overview on how this works, you have power coming from the engine that goes into the torque converter inside of the bell housing. It's then going to go into this section here, which is the six-speed automatic transmission, which is going to change the gears. The output of that is going to be sent to this area here, which is the center differential. This is essentially what forms the quattro all-wheel drive system in here, where it's going to split the power between the rear wheels and the prop shaft here that goes to the front wheel. So there's a bunch of T40s going all the way around here. I'm going to take those off. All right, so with that, this part here is loose and I can remove it. This here is just essentially the housing with a bearing inside for this flange where your drive shaft would bolt up to. Now I'm gonna take off this unit over here. It just slides right off. All right, next up, I'm gonna see if I can get this transfer case housing off. These are a bunch of T40s. All Cool. Now taking a look at these gears here, notice that they're slanted cut, which is going to reduce noise. This here is the output gear that comes from the transmission, and that's directly splined over here to the input shaft of the center differential. Now inside of that gear, we have this shaft over here, which is actually the input shaft going to the front prop shaft. You can see it is linked to a gear inside of here which in turn is linked to a counter gear that goes to this front prop shaft and this here is the output of the center differential going towards the front prop shaft by the way this was a working transmission I just dedicated to the use of this video There's just two t40s over here hanging out here's the front prop shaft it's internally splined on that side and it's got a bearing on this side and before I move on I'm just gonna clean up my little studio here with my baby daughter's old onesie boy did they grow fast so here we have the transfer case for the Audi Quattro all-wheel drive system. This here is the input gear coming off of the transmission. This here is the flange going to the rear drive shaft and this gear goes to the front prop shaft. There's two main purposes, the first of which is to provide the power split between the rear and the front over here so they can move independently without binding. And the second of which is more of a limited slip differential to ensure that the torque between the two is applied to the correct axle that has the most amount of traction. Taking a look at how this thing works here, we've got the input coming from the transmission. Now in an ideal scenario, this entire thing is going to rotate together. There's not going to be any slip or any lockup for a 50-50 distribution from front to rear. So let's say we're going around a corner. Now you don't want the all-wheel drive system to bind, which is why you need differential action between the front and the rear. If I apply a little bit of resistance here and I rotate the front axle, you can see it's allowed to rotate a lot faster than the rear axle. I can rotate it many more times in order to get the single turn over on this side. Now I've devised this jig here so we can visualize how this limited slip differential is going to work. This here is the input gear which I've tied over to my impact gun of course using duct tape. Now this impact gun is capable of providing torque up until the hammer starts to fire off inside of there. When we're going to apply this torque here I'm going to put a little bit of drag on the rear wheels to simulate traction over there and no drag on the front wheels to simulate the front wheels spinning as if they were on ice or something. Now normally if you were going to drive this forward you can see that they're spinning at the same speed with a 50-50 power ratio. I'll put my hand on the rear here to simulate some drag and I'll slowly speed this up here. Now one thing is I can actually feel the torque increasing significantly over here on my hand as this thing starts to speed up and that's because of the mechanism trying to increase the torque going to the rear wheel. Now as I speed up really fast here there's a lot more resistance. Ah oh, then my impact fired off and my duct tape broke. Of course the transmission of the engine will easily overcome my resistive torque and provide a complete lockup on this differential here so they can power you through the situation. As a comparison here's the front differential from this transmission. This is an open style differential. I do have another video on how open differentials work if you do want to check that out. Now you essentially see here if I hold the passenger side axle no matter how fast I go there is no lockup nor is there any increasing resistive torque on this side. 
can just keep going and going. So now that we know how the center differential works, let's see if I can chop this open so we can see what's inside. Now this entire inside piece is screwed in to the outside casing. So I'm going to have to figure out how to cut this because you're going to need a special tool in order to get this off properly. Well, that didn't even take two minutes to grind apart. So you can see as I take this thing apart here, this here is the case. Now the case and the planted carrier do move together. Then at the top here, we've got the ring gear. You got a centerpiece inside of here that's splined to the rear drive shaft. Then we've got this ring gear over here. Now inside of the case here, you see there's a clutch-like material that lines the inside of there. That interfaces with the back of the ring gear. And then there's a clutch-like material on the planet carrier, which interfaces with the inside of the ring gear. And then finally inside of here, we have the sun gear. Now this sun gear is splined internally to go to the front wheel. Now you'll also know that the input, which is the planet carrier, is always tied to the output being the sun gear and the ring gear. So there's always a torque transfer between these two, regardless if one is completely stopped. Now an open differential like this is always going to be powering both front and rear wheels. There's no clutch or anything that has to lock or unlock. You can see even if I hold one stationary, the front wheels are going to move. And if I hold the sun gear stationary, the ring gears are going to move. So a normal pavement Audi's Quattro system is going to give you a 50-50 torque split. Now what's interesting is this little clutch mechanism inside of here. What's going to happen if I remove it here is you'll see on this planet carrier over here there's a very steep angle on these little planets. Now not only is that going to allow the planets to rotate when the sun gear rotates but it's going to create a very large axial force in this direction and that's going to push up on this clutch. Now when you push up on that clutch it's going to press inside of this ring gear over here and that's going to push the ring gear against the housing over here so it kind of locks this ring gear to the planet carrier so in this case it kind of limits the amount of slip that you get between these two so for example let's say the front wheels are spinning like crazy but the rear wheels have a lot of traction they're not going anywhere well as this speeds up here that clutch is going to start to squeeze up against this ring gear and squish it between the casing over here so essentially now you've locked this up by transferring torque from the input to the output on the ring gear so you can turn the rear wheels together with the front wheel. Now there's no electrohydraulic clutches, there's no clutch plates being bathed in fluid. It's a very simple friction surface that presses up against here to limit the slip. I'm just really disappointed though that this wasn't a torsion style differential because all of that slip would be limited in a mechanically much more complicated way. Now I'm going to turn my attention to the front differential. It's a whack. All right, now I'm going to pull out the front differential assembly. It's just a standard open differential. And if you look inside of the housing, you'll see the pinion gear that comes from that prop shaft. So now I've got the transfer case off and the front differential guts out. We're going to turn our attention to the bottom of this transmission here and remove the guts. Every screw I've came across so far is a T40, so I actually like this transmission. I'm going to pop off this pan. Now someone's already been here before because they had to swap the mechatronic unit when swapping the engine and transmission assembly. Here you've got the gasket and then you've got this very weird contraption. This is what's going to adjust the transmission fluid level. We're going to pop off this fluid filter assembly here. You can see there's a couple of metallic deposits on here. So here we've got the valve body which is basically the brains of the unit. And essentially what it does is it's got a bunch of these solenoids over here that are control the fluid flow to either lock up or disengage clutches inside of there to give you the different gear ratio. And I'm going to start taking apart all of the bolts that I can see. Now the top here you've got the manual valve which is controlled to the shifter cable. It also engages the parking pole at the back of the transmission output here. This is how valve bodies should be made. They're all the same size bolt that needs to be taken out in order to get the entire valve body out of here. You don't have to worry about different bolts being different sizes. You just take off all of the same T40. The rest of them that are holding it together are probably T30s. You see you don't need a diagram to put this back together. But this is basically what's going to control the fluid flow through all of these little ports over here and in here to lock up the respective clutches. Switch to a T25 finally. Take off this lid here. Oop, got a bit of a springiness to it. So with the mechatronic out of the way, I'm next going to turn myself to removing the bell housing and front differential assembly. And whip these off. Now one thing I noticed with this prop shaft tube is that it's not exactly perpendicular to the transmission. It kind of meets the front differential at an angle. Next up I'm going to remove all these T27 torques. We'll hold the oil pump housing on. Get the input shaft here. And we've got the first set of planetary gears and clutches. Oh, it's got a bit of weight to it. Take out the next set of clutches. Oh, these clutches look really new. I've encountered my first snap ring. 
Oh, sprayed my face and my glasses. And this one's easier because it's thinner. Instead of clutches, clutches are a little bit dark. All right, after a bit of struggling, I'm working on the next set here. Should have it now. So now that we've got the transmission apart, let's take a quick look at how it works. Laid out everything longitudinally because that's how this transmission came out. Now if you want to learn a little bit more details on how a longitudinal transmission works, make sure you check out the video linked above. Now we're going to start at the front here. We have the flex plate that bolts up to the torque converter. And I do have another video on how torque converters work where I chop one apart, so make sure you check that out. But it's got three main functions. The first one is it allows you to stop at a stoplight with the engine running and the transmission not running. The second one is it multiplies torque and the third one is it locks up completely on the highway for better efficiency. And just behind that we do have the oil pump which provides fluid flow to the valve body and it lubricates all of these pieces. Let's pop off the back cover here. This is a gear style oil pump so essentially as this rotates here fluid is going to go in through here and get squeezed out to the other side providing fluid flow. Next up we've got our first set of planetary gear sets and clutches. Now these clutches here they're actually in pretty good condition. They're comprised of a bunch of these steel plates which are splined to the inside of the transmission casing and then we've got these darker friction clutches. Now these clutches look to be in okay shape. It's definitely used but not brand new. Essentially how this works is this entire thing is floating in transmission fluid there's this piston over here which comes up behind it and squeezes it together and that's going to lock the outside which is the transmission casing to the inside which is the planetary gear set to become stationary and over here on the shaft you can see the little holes where the fluid is going to flow from that valve body to the pistons that sit behind these clutches to control them all right next up behind it we do have the actual piston itself again you can see these are the holes here where the fluid is going to flow and then this piece here is going to pop out to engage that clutch notice that the spines are on the inside over here but this entire thing can still rotate in its case. Finally at the back of the transmission we have the last planetary gear set. This one here comprises of these planets which are set on the planet carrier over here. In between them we have the sun gear which interfaces in between there and then of course around them at the back here we have the ring gear which is also internally splined. Now in this case the sun gear was splined to the last planetary gear set and that actually forms the input to this planetary gear set in the middle here and the ring gear at the back of the transmission goes to the transfer case so that will be your output the planet carrier also rotates and it's got a clutch assembly to stop it from moving and that's how you change the final gear ratio now controlling all of those clutches is the brain of the transmission which is the valve body it's got a bunch of these solenoids and valves inside of here that redirect the fluid to turn on and off those pistons it's also got a little computer inside of here which has to be programmed every time you swap your engine or your transmission now i'm just going to remove all these t27s yeah i can pop off the computer over here these solenoids are commanded by the computer and you can see they got a little filter on them. Now they allow the oil flow from the oil pump to move through the passages inside of here to lock up the clutch. And all right, we'll pop this apart here. And you can see there's a bunch of these little springs and check balls that are gonna fall out. The probably some of the check balls that fall out feel like they're plastic. Essentially what you got here is a big maze which all these valves and solenoids are gonna control the fluid direction and flow with which ones to turn on when you need to shift gear. It's gonna direct that flow to the transmission casing over here where it's got these holes over here which are going to directly lead to the pistons inside. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised for a six speed, this is pretty small and it only has two layers. Some valve bodies have three or four layers. Of course, this is going to make a mess, but this is what I have my baby's clothes for. And if the outside ever gets dirty, just remember there's always the inside. And this here is the computer circuit board. It's all encased in plastic, but all the solenoids would line up right here and be computer controlled. Let's see what this is made of. This looks like an old Pentium 2 processor. It looks so huge. It's not even a proper circuit board, this is just a bus bar kind of thing. It goes to all the solenoids and a simple computer. It was like a random resistor and that's it. And here's a look inside the transmission pad. Now you do have a standard drain plug back there. But you have this plastic contraption here which is used to set the fluid level. Essentially once the fluid rises above this little ledge over here, it's going to pour down out to the overflow hole which is down over here. That's how you service these transmissions nowadays. There's no such thing as a dipstick tube or a fill port. The other thing is they have these two magnets over here. And they got a bit of paste on them. As the transmission wears down, there are obviously going to be a lot of particles and you want that to get caught by the magnets and the filter rather than get recycled. And of course now I can use the magnets to pick up all the bolts laying around. And that's pretty much sums up the transmission part. Well, that's a look at how this version of Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system works. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.